So you've got a big one, which is air pollution, and anybody who's living in London right now will know that that's, that's on the, high on the agenda of the mayor and other people in London. So that has an impact directly on things like asthma, COPD, respiratory conditions, but also in the long term, it increases risks of things like heart attacks, strokes, even dementia. And we know that it's prematurely killing millions of people globally and 36,000 people per year in the UK. You've also got direct impacts of heat. So um, in primary care, you know, we often talk about cradle to grave care. And I definitely think the most sort of vulnerable groups that I see are the young and the old and the ones that are kind of, you know, we try, we see a bit more generally. Um, so they might be impacted directly by, by heat related illness. Um, so in 2020, 2000 people died um, of heat related illness in, in UK. And then there's the kind of changing way that we see infection and, and things with, with the rising climate. So vector-borne diseases will start to go on the rise and we might get, see more pandemics in the future. And then we have direct sort of weather event things that might affect health. So, you know, people might have been affected by that recent storm that was in the papers, the fact that people have, you know, power outages or that they might have flooding. Um, and, you know, we saw it in London this year with things like Whips Cross Hospital was flooded. So directly on the services we are providing in the NHS and on people's well-being. And then again, a thing that I feel really passionate about and ties it in for me is the social consequences of this. So both on again huge global and global issues and it's happening right now particularly in the global south but that um there will be migration of people and there will also be you know the, the people who are are being impacted hardest are often the kind of most vulnerable groups and the most unheard you know it's very you're talking about kind of Zoe coming and being on consultation is that often these decisions these top-down decisions are made without hearing the people who have have a voice and often those people are working incredibly hard and being impacted by things they have no control over so I think there's a huge amount of social inequality here we know that things like domestic violence go up in hotter weather and um, that insecure housing becomes more problematic with the changing climate so there's huge amounts of social consequences of a changing climate and that is what we see in primary care all the time <laughs> Uh, one is the direct impacts of, of climate change shocks, natural disasters that affect uh, hundreds of thousands of people. But perhaps the most important, though less often seen, is the effect on climate change uh, and its impact on food production systems. So the poor spend a high proportion of their income on food staples. And if food becomes insecure, the proportion of income they have to spend on food becomes, makes food perhaps unaffordable. to work closely with the poor and at risk, to work across scales, local to global, and to focus on uh, the poorest rather than being drawn by statistics or policy towards those at the margins of poverty or risk. The second point around scale really uh, celebrates the capacity of the poor, the local poor, to provide solutions to their local context, but that that's not sufficient. Uh, this needs to be connected with more structural uh, research and structural investments around infrastructure, economics, policy, and researchers have the capacity to work at both levels and to facilitate a connection between the local and the structural.
Adaptation and adequate finance for adaptation are key elements of the Paris Agreement. This is because millions of people around the world are already feeling devastating impacts of climate change. Adaptation is climate resilient development. It is helping farmers deal with droughts. It is helping communities survive sea level rise and severe floods. It's helping buildings and infrastructure be resilient to extreme weather events, cyclones and storms.